equation using the invariants. Calculate the three invariants, I1, I2, I3. Uh, put it into your cubic equation and solve for the roots. The roots will be your principal stresses. What about number two? Sorry, yes? Yes. 436. For the both pieces, you got 436. Last time I made a, a <coughs> mistake here. So this is the correct equation. So what's your answer? 444 megapascal. And what's your one mesis? Number one.
So what's your answer for number two? So what's your principal stress for number two? And yet? the von Mises, you don't really need the principal stress. You can simply calculate your von Mises right away from your state of stress. So this one now can use that. Can you use grace then? Can you use grace? What grace be now? So much you only need a tree. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Anyway, the solution is very straightforward. Um, you know that this will always end up to be a cubic equation. So um, the equations for your invariance, I1, R2, are already given. So you can solve for them. Yeah, and then just put it into um, this cubic equation and you take the roots. The maximum value will be your principal stress. Your, your first principal, that is. What about this one? Anybody? Anybody who got the answer of the first principle? Four. Four one nine. Anybody who says otherwise? What about the uh, one misses? So why is your one misses higher than? So any any objection with the values? So uh, please check first a few minutes before we discuss. expecting that the uh, stress here will be higher even though if one normal stress is zero. Why is that so? Um, if you try to look at this one, these are normal stresses. Okay? So these are normal stresses. Um, if one is zero, the possibility is one is not uh, balanced. So one side is not balanced. There will be shear stresses, yes, but because of this unbalanced, although this one is less than the other, but since this one is unbalanced, then it will try to cause uh, higher stress, which probably has been reflected in your body's stress. There will be, uh, one pieces has to do with uh, shearing as well, it includes shearing, while principal stress is just a normal uh, stress. So because of this unbalanced value here, then chances are you will get a higher uh, one piece of stress. Okay, so please continue with that. What about this one? Four and five. So please continue to solve that.
four five, yes. And there's this uh, five A five B. So what do you think of problem number four? What do you think of problem number four? Um, it's just a basically a two by two matrix, uh, considering that you have uh, a thin pipe. One is you have to consider a thin pipe, and then here the radius is 25 times 2, that is 50, divided by 5, so D all over D is about 10, quarter line. So here it's mentioned that the pipe is thin, so you have to use your, uh, so sigma radial is 0, theta theta, and Z Z will be non-zero. So just to give you an insight here, so number four, so you have a thin pipe, so your sigma ZZ is not zero, sigma theta theta is not zero of course, but your radial stress will be equal to zero. So the thing here is that it mentions that it will be subjected to torque plus additional pressure inside the pipe. So what will happen? You have a twisting um, action plus you have uh, an internal force trying to expand that pipe. So initially when we had the uh, pipe only or we had the pressure vessel only without twisting, What will be discussed here? That sigma Z Z. And this one is your stress. So what now if you have twisting portion in your pipe? I think you have it there in your lecture slides. What will happen? So this one, your stress is a sigma theta theta, sigma Z Z, zero, zero, right? What about if you have, say, twisting? So you have a torsion. So what will happen here? You have shear, yes? So you have a, a shear. So that here you have a sigma beta z. Oh, sorry, that's zero. Sigma theta z, or you can have this one as sigma one two, not a problem. A sigma theta z, and this will be zero. So you combine them together, you have now a full house. Sigma theta theta, sigma theta z. Okay. So this one is due to your torque while this one will be due to the pressure inside. So try to solve. <coughs> so the equation is given here. So this is your shear, shear stress, sorry, shear stress. Um, that will be a sigma theta z is equal to dr all over j. So that's already given. And then your j is given as uh, one half pi and then of course your torque is also given as one, sorry, that's 1.2 kilonewton meter. Sorry for that. So of course this one, how do you calculate for sigma theta theta? What's our equation for this one here? We have done five problems already, what's your equation here? P, P, 
dr all over d, okay? Yes. And then this one is? There you go. So from here, you will be able to determine this one. Is this the, uh, the big R or the small R? Well, anyway, it's thin, so you don't really have to worry about that. So the assumption here is the uh, outside radius is equal to uh, the inside radius if you have a uh, thin uh, plane stress assumption or a thin plane or thin wall pressure vessel that is. Okay? So try that. <coughs> It's okay, please discuss. Seems that you're even noisier if I'm explaining here. So try to discuss.
Hi, call your name, please. Abdul Hakim. Ahmad Wanmar. Alicia. Arabi. Arabi. Zhao Chao Pa He Chen Yong Jie Darren Darren 